All right, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the ICA show. I am Alan, your host, and I'm joined once again by Luke, your co-host. Luke, how are you doing tonight? Doing pretty good, Alan. How are you? I'm doing very good. Welcome back. We skipped a few weeks because one week we had Easter, one week we had Purim, but now we are back stronger than ever. So today is going to be a three-show episode with a school that we're doing. I'm not going to reveal who the school is until the end, but I can reveal the guest. But before I reveal the guest, let me reveal the format of the show. So for the show, you're going to have to guess the USCF rating of our guest. He's going to show you a game he played today against our coach Moshe. This was a 20-minute game, five-second delay. Our guest is white. Moshe is black. Moshe is one of our coaches, and he recently played at a Rossville tournament. He coaches pretty often at our school. After that, our coach is going to challenge you guys to blitz games. Maybe we'll do two or three, depending on how much time we have. So without further ado, Seth, welcome to our show. Hey, guys. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. So usually what we do, we interview you before we go over the game. But today we're going to get right into it, and we'll do the interview after. So let me... Open up the window. Everyone sees the game? Yep. All right. Let's get into it. So, game started. E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight C6, Scotch, and Luke. First comment he mentioned to me, off the record. It's a yeah. very interesting opening for Black. Yeah, so just so uh, everybody's on the same page, uh, it's Seth with uh, the white pieces and our coach Moshe with black. Um, Scotch, you know, pretty normal opening. Uh, at the lower levels, you know, beginning, intermediate, uh, it tends to be a very aggressive way to play. But, uh, you know, it's uh, sort of a drawing weapon in a lot of cases. You get a, like, a four-night Scotch. Uh, it's sort of difficult to play for a win if Black, you know, knows their theory and stuff. But uh, Bishop d6, as far as I'm aware, is not one of those lines. Uh, a lot of times, you know, we tell uh, students when they're learning the opening principles, do not put a bishop in front of a center pawn, right? Because if you put the bishop on d6, uh, oh, well, I, I guess my highlights aren't showing up. But uh, basically, you put the bishop on d6, you block the d7 pawn from moving, which blocks the bishop on c8 from getting out, which blocks the rook from getting out on a8, and it's, uh, you know, kind of a mess. But uh, there are ways to develop, um, you know, it, but it's going to be harder. So a little bit of a strange move. In the game, uh, d5 is played, and uh, which I actually, I, I like that decision. I guess the other way would be like, you know, uh, Maybe you could play like c3 or something like that, bishop c4. But I, I like d5 grabbing the space. And uh, well, now that bishop on d6 looks a little bit, you know, silly. Uh, now that there's not going to be a capture on e5. So knight e7. And uh, yeah, Seth, I, th I think this is an important uh, moment to decide how you, you know, what your setup's going to be like. And I thought b3 was interesting. Um, a lot of times, well, I, I guess I'll ask you. Uh, is this like a setup you've seen before? Did you, did you come up with it over the board? What, what, yeah, what? I, yeah, I came up with this over the board. I mean, I've never seen Bishop D6 before, ever. So yeah. I, just thought I would just like be cut of the Bishop mm -hmm. and then just try to go after the E pawn. Yeah. So th this I've always I, I thought was interesting in this structure where there's a pawn on E5. This is very unique, right? Pawns on uh, E4 and D5, pawn on E5. And Fionca, I don't think I've ever seen that in any other opening. Um, and that is, uh, you know, usually you, you see a lot of different setups, but this one, very unique. Um, probably this is like a brand new position in the database. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but okay, interesting idea. In the game, uh, Alan, what, 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 what is he playing? I th oh, you know what, Alan, I think you have to turn on our ability to make moves. I think that's what it is. <laughs> Actually, do you want to uh, share in, screen, Luke? You want to share screen? Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, hold on. Just one second. Um, here we go. Okay. 
Got it. Uh. Wait. Uh, nothing's popping up, is it? No. Yeah, I'm trying to click on the screen. Um, nothing's coming up. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Wait, what? Right. If you if you're able to figure it out, we'll con we'll do it. For now, yeah. let's continue with the match. No. Yeah. We'll just do it that way. Right. Aha! I got it. I, I, I think I got it. You got it. There we go. No, no, okay, good, good. It was, uh, you know, it's even too difficult to explain. Right, let's do this. Um. Okay, great. So, 97. Um. And that, so what I was saying before, right, bishop on d6, you block this pawn, you block the bishop in, which blocks the rook from getting in the game. It's going to be sort of strange to develop your pieces. Um. One setup that I liked here um, was like, you see this in some weird Benonis where white doesn't play uh, c4, like d4, c5, d5, knight f6, and knight c3 instead of c4. Um, you see the setup with like bishop c4, knight d2, and this bishop is really bad because you go like this and put the knight on c4, and the bishop is uh, preventing black's f5 break. This, I think, is like very very annoying for black to deal with um i'm actually and i was actually just curious if b3 let, let's see yeah completely new position so <laughs> i i like it i like it um okay so c6 which i guess is what you're supposed to be doing here is black right if you take you're not hanging a piece because black gets to take back this way they open up the bishop and this would be i think very nice for black actually um which, you know, maybe uh, Moshe was on some, like, you know, 5D uh, creativity in this game. But C4, I like maintaining the space. But there is something to be said for now. This bishop has some more uh, range uh, on the dark squares. Okay. Yeah, Seth, I'm curious. I'm curious, Seth. Yeah. For C4, like, obviously, weighing up, like, controlling the center versus completely opening yourself up, like Luke said. 20-minute game, how long did it take you to make this move? Um, Not that long, because another one of my ideas was to try to play maybe bishop a3 to get rid of the dark squared bishop. And like mm -hmm. even if my knight ends up on a3, I mean, I just have so much space. I thought that it would be fine. And especially if you can just get the knight off a3 in the future, maneuver it, it would be fine. Yeah, just for the, for the, you know, the good people at home, uh, of course, you don't want to play bishop a3 now because the pawn's hanging, but especially just a, a tactic to look out for, a classic puzzle rush theme. Take, take, and we can see, I don't know if anyone wants to put in the chat any quick commenters. Black to move. Black to move. Queen a5. And you drop a piece. That, that's the classic puzzle rush tactic. Just uh, wanted to point that one out. So bishop d3, though. Castles. Okay, again, says I'm glad you saw there's no bishop uh, bishop a3 here because of the same tactic. Bishop b2, though, instead. And actually, um, okay, they can defend the pawn. Um, and this is where, you know, I, I like the idea of bishop b2, but I think this is sort of the problem uh, where you don't see this so much in a lot of e4, e5 positions. Because of this knight jumping to f4, there's no bishop looking there, and... Uh, you're sort of lacking on the dark squares. You have this uh, light squared bishop that uh, is really going to struggle uh, against this knight, unless you're going for some sort of g3 and maybe rerouting the bishop. But that obviously is going to spend uh, cost some tempi. Um, H4 now says Brian Andre. That, that that's a creative idea. H4 and H5, I guess. Common, you know, typical idea to play against a knight on g6 b6 b3 these types of squares it's to chase them down with uh a flank pawn uh seth i have to ask did you consider a move like h4 or maybe even g3 no it's never really a move i typically think of i like to play more like defensively wait for my opponent to make a mistake and then mm. try to win from there i'm not really so aggressive fair enough fair enough yeah there there of course is uh, some risk involved here 
Um, but I actually, I like the idea. Um, yeah, if you're ever going h5, then this g5 square becomes extremely weak. Um, so, okay, interesting idea. g3 may be a possibility as well. Probably, Alan, you know what uh, theme we'd be seeing. Either bishop d, uh, c7 and d6, or the ICA show classic rook e8, bishop f8. This maybe is an idea. Maybe maybe this is incorrect with the knight on g6 because you can never play uh, uh, g6. But like we said, this bishop on d6 is uh, a little bit problematic uh, in general. Um, you're going to have to spend some more moves getting it out of the way. Um, so castles happens. OK, bishop c7, which I like. This, I think, makes a lot more sense than what we were saying before, as much as I uh, do like that uh rerouting rookie eight bishop f8 bishop c7 seems uh to be the correct idea here rookie one so seth are you, are you going for this is this what we're dealing with or is it just uh development here uh, it was just development okay i wasn't really thinking for bishop f1 in the future fair enough yeah it's uh you know we, we, we love to see this one maybe it makes some sense with this g3 but um a, a typical issue you run into with the double Theon Keto is like where to put the knights, right? Like you put the bishop here. This knight seems like, I don't know, it, it just feels a little weird on d2. It's never going through to f1. Uh, and the pawn on c4 is uh, sort of in the way here. d6. Um, Yeah, I guess. And a move like, actually, a move like c5 is maybe slightly interesting, but b6 probably uh, is proving the pawn chain to be overextended. Um, yeah, Brian, I, I like that idea. That's uh, kind of what uh, I was hinting at there. G3, bishop f1, uh, bishop g2, and try to play for f4 at some point. But then again, the problem is you have to move the rook back. Uh, you're probably going to have to move the rook back at some point, which just feels like the whole setup is uh, a little bit artificial. But maybe it's the way to go in such a close <laughs> um d6 so okay actually i'm starting to like black's position a little bit more I, I have to say not not necessarily more than uh yours seth but somehow moshe has has dealed with uh his opening uh experiment quite well uh we get you know th this is maybe more typical of uh e4 e5 with with some weirdness with this fian keto on the queen side uh at this point um did you have any you know, sort of general plan you were going for, or were you just trying to get the pieces out? Um, yeah, I'm just really trying to find a place to put my knight, uh, my B1 knight. I don't really yeah. know where it's going to go, so I'm just mm -hmm. trying to find a way to, like, put it somewhere good. Yep. So, knight c3, um, which I, I guess was definitely a square. Uh, knight d2, of course, would be the other one. Um, yeah, the... Again, I feel like this bishop just is, uh, especially after d6, it feels like the bishop is blocked out. Um, but, there, you know, it could always be uh, rerouted, maybe like this. Bishop g4, I like, again, maybe trying to isolate this uh, bad bishop, right, blocked in by all the pawns. h3, and, okay, I don't know if any of my students are watching, but classic situation we've been looking at, h3 makes this knight jumping to f4 much more powerful, especially especially now that there's no g3. I believe, if my memory is serving me right, he takes the opportunity to play it right now, and there's no g3. You know, that train has left the station because of this pawn on h3. So, actually, I really like how Moshe is playing this. He's, uh, I think, taking a bad opening and uh, really, really making the most of it. Rook d1, maybe now a moment for bishop f1, where g3 is a threat and actually maybe uh maybe i'm just wrong maybe this is good for, for white maybe you just play with the two bishops and uh you know queen d7 king h2 slowly you're gonna play g3 take some space and this actually i think looks very nice um you just yeah extra space two bishops that looks like a very solid advantage for white rook fd1 so bringing the last piece to the game very principled type of move and bishop a5. Somehow this looks wrong to me. I don't. I don't know if you, uh, you know, had any similar thoughts. It feels uh, sort of strange. Uh, 
uh, trying to give up the, the second bishop. Um, someone in the comments asks, where G3 isn't red? I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not sure what the question is there. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Moving on. Uh, yeah. But okay. Uh, Seth, uh, after bishop a5, I, did, did you get the same sort of bad taste in your mouth as I am here? This looks a little bit weird. Taking yeah, I mean, yeah. I didn't really expect him to end up trading. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, I don't really understand. I don't really understand like what exactly he was trying to do. I mean, it pins my knight, so I don't know. I don't know what. Like, I don't know if he was going to try to like exploit the pin in some way that I'm like not seeing. I don't, yeah. I just don't really understand what that move was supposed to do. I mean, I guess there's some logic to it, right? He's trying to trade off his, well, his bad bishop, but. Okay, you just gave up the light squared bishop. Now you're spending... So you spent two moves to give up the light squared bishop. Now you spent one... Whoops. One, two, three, four moves to try to give up the other one. You're giving white, what? More space, two bishops, and, like, eight tempi. That sounds like a good deal for white. Um, so, yeah, a little bit strange. And A3, I really like it. You know, if you want to put your bishop on A5, you know, you better decide soon. If you're going to give it up, otherwise it's going to be banished, uh, and that bishop will be really, really bad on b6 or uh, um, or, or on c7. So actually, I really like a3. It looks like a little bit of a slow move, but then again, bishop a5 was equally slow. Uh, a better move for black would have could have been uh, bishop b6. I think I agree. I tend to agree here. Um, yeah, this looks good. Uh, definitely better more natural right you're putting it here um now maybe there are even tactics with uh you know again we're talking about this g3 plan in the distant future there might be tactics on g3 uh so some you know capture on g3 given the fact that this is pinned so this looks this looks good to me and again that's just very distant uh, potentials but bishop a5 yeah weird looking move maybe it's good it doesn't look like it though and that, I'm just going by uh, visuals here. So he takes. Okay. He sees the, the B4 push is coming. He decides, uh, if not now, then when. If you say A, you must say B, uh, like they say. But this, I really have to say, as a fan of the bishops myself, this looks uh, this looks really good. It, it, just the extra space. I, I don't see how, how white is not just, like, significantly better here. Okay. Takes. I like this capture too, opening up the bishop. And again, these knights, I have a feeling, are just not going to be able to compete with, uh, yeah, the double diagonals here. So, rook c8. Now, okay, there's a little bit of a pin, but one detail that I think is very important, uh, uh, very important here, that you can always kick the rook. There's always bishop f5. Right, and this is the problem for black when you're playing against, or for either side when you're playing against the two bishops, is if you try to block out one bishop, right? You try to play g6. Well, all of a sudden this one's getting opened up, right? So you know you try to play. This obviously looks uh, sort of catastrophic for the pawn structure, but if you ever play f6 trying to block out this one, right, then uh, the light squares are getting much weaker. The, the g6 squares uh, less defended there. So uh, okay, someone. Uh, in the chat is suggesting the the immediate bishop f5 which uh yeah definitely looks like a move um yeah also maybe you're now preparing uh a g3 move with the fact that this is protected and again like for example let's say rook d7 okay g3 right this is defended g6 is never a move we win a pawn and that's just terrible knight g6 and where's brian andre andre in uh the comment section h4 right and these knights look really really bad right the knights have no mobility black has no space and uh the bishops are about to dine on the king's side this looks uh really really good for white probably just like much much better um so i, I yeah i really like bishop f5 bishop c2 though so again bishops on adjacent diagonals are usually really good you do have to be careful with this pin though and maybe some tr uh, trickiness with the knights Queen c7, so again, bishop f5 just completely, uh, you know, reigns on 
uh, Black's Parade, probably you'd see like Night D7. But again, this looks really uh, quite strange. Uh, I, I have to be honest here. Um, with Again, with, with the same idea of Knight G6, H4, and uh, yeah. And now even the bishop can tuck back to H3 to maintain the pin. That would look uh, kind of nice. And just, you know, maybe F4 now is coming with even more of a punch opening up the bishop. H5, H6 even. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm dreaming a little too much. In the game, Queen C7 and Bishop E2. So a little bit of shuffling with the bishops. How quickly were you playing these moves? I think that's an important question for the people at home trying to figure out the rating. Um, I mean, at this point, I was I was definitely under some time pressure. I think I was yeah. about like eight or nine minutes. I mean, mm -hmm. I played mm -hmm. Bishop E2 kind of just because I had no idea what else to play. So yeah. I was kind of just not trying to like lose too much time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the time pressure, especially, uh, I don't know how much increment you guys were playing with. But... No increment, five second delay. Okay. So, yeah, that uh, once you hit single digits, the, you know, your heart rate starts uh, speeding up. But, uh, yeah, so I, I think these last couple moves are where Black equalizes. Right? In the opening, Black played sort of a dodgy system. Uh, at some point, you were, you know, really cranking up the advantage, playing just natural moves. You know, when your opponent is playing strangely, usually the uh, the prescription is just to play normally, and you'll have an advantage. Usually that's how it works out. Um, and then, so he, around here, like we were saying, with this bishop f5 move, I think white is just like significantly better. But then once you start shuffling the bishops, one, two, three moves back and forth, it allows black to get this really nice setup with... Uh, once they get b5, they're starting to get counterplay, right? Whenever there's this uh, trade here, the knight can come to uh, c5. But even worse, I think, yeah, they're just black is just winning a pawn here. Takes, 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 and uh, you're not in time to re-engage the pin because your queen's hanging. So yeah, this is a uh, a really really big improvement for black, and black is probably just again, well, blacks have a pawn, right? They're just much better. So uh, and especially here. Now this bishop all of a sudden looks kind of bad, right? When the bishop is not paired up with its light squared counterpart, uh, now it actually, yeah, it just looks like a bad piece. Blocked by these pawns, like uh, we were saying, might become an issue with this e5 stronghold defended by d6. It looks like black has gotten everything they want all of a sudden. Uh, like if you just saw this position, I would probably think, you know, black played a great opening. Uh, although we know that's not the case. Rookie two, I like. That's a, that shows some under some very good understanding, right? Blocking out entry on uh, the second rank, which of course, uh, you know, all of our end game aficionados know about. Rook c8, well played by Moshe, doubling on the open file. G3, okay. Also, I like. G3 is a you know classic uh, plan when when you don't really have one is g3 king g2 take some space i like this idea a lot also uh maybe blocking out some knight jumps rook c5 i really like the last couple moves by moshe i think they're uh you know probably the best moves uh, activating all of his pieces and uh somehow these rooks i don't know where you're supposed to put them right this bishop you'd like to play rook b2 you'd like to play rook b1 take the only other open file on the board but again that bishop is just in the way and you can't play bishop c1, you can't play a4, bishop a3. Very sad state of affairs for this bishop sitting on b2 here. Uh, is this what you were thinking during the, during the game? Were you trying to figure out how you could get that guy back in the game? Bishop on yeah. Um, yeah. At this point, I didn't really see anything. But mm -hmm. I think I missed my chance earlier. I, um, after like all the trades, after we traded queens, I probably could have played bishop c1. And try to like get it... Uh, with the bishop on like a new diagonal, but I think yeah, um, maybe some... I think it's too late now. So I think my bishop's kind of yeah. Dead. And here, even a move like rook a4 is always very annoying, where you just stop the pawn in its tracks. Now this bishop is tied down. Yeah, this is tough. And there's no bishop here because takes here. You just go rook a6, and uh, yeah, maybe maybe this is a way to play. Maybe this is a way to try to sack a pawn and get some activity. But actually here, just rook d6. And 
yeah, there's kind of nothing. Yeah, that's tough. Um, okay. Yeah, so trying to think of any other ways. Yeah, actually, maybe this is worse than I even thought at first. Because um, there's always this pressure on the D5 pawn. Two weaknesses, right? A4 and D5, another classic endgame uh, mantra. If there's two weaknesses, usually that's enough for uh, the side with the material advantage to win. Or a lot of times, even if there is no material advantage. Okay, so rook d2, h6, very principled. Again, flight square, right? Uh, a lot of times it's a question of which square are you putting your pawns on to play against the bishop. I think dark squares are definitely correct here. Because if you go g6, well, then you're maybe allowing some, you know, very distant... Uh, bishop h6 or like you go g6 king uh g7 you know maybe there's like an f4 at some point i think it makes a lot of sense to put the king on a light square and the pawns on dark squares to play against this bishop on b2 king g2 though a5 again the last couple moves i think were really really good by motion these uh yeah i think this is very well played stuff really good technique okay and uh a final attempt which uh yeah, I, I mean, I think you're running into the problem uh, at every juncture here that this bishop is just completely dead, right? There's nowhere to put it, so I, I, I can see where you're coming from trying to uh, break through with some sort of tactic. Um, did you see knight d7? I'm assuming you did. Knight d7? Yeah. Um, like after, after this? Yeah, here. I kind of more assumed that he was going to play rook c8 and just get his rook behind the pawn. Uh-huh. Which I think like this. is probably what I I personally think that would have been better. Because mm -hmm. now because then after he, he moves his other rook back to like C seven, it's gonna be impossible to defend the pawn. Mm hmm Yeah, this looks like you just uh win the pawn outright, but ninety seven. Again, I, I think Moshe is a, a principled guy. This is uh, this is, I think this is the first game I've ever seen him play. Uh we teach in the same room at the uh ICA school in uh the great township of glen rock uh yeah i've never seen him play but th this is a very principled end game technique I, I feel it the knight blockades the pawn and okay maybe there is a tactical issue here right with the rook entering i, I definitely getting a little bit of activity here but rook d4 is uh very well played i, I don't know if he calculated the following sequence but very nice detail after the capture um which you're you know he's sort of forced here right otherwise they just scoop up the pawn on d6 after the capture this pawn is becoming too fast for this rook to uh to ignore and after rook b7 again it looks like maybe some trickiness although still rook goes uh behind the past pawn and i don't i don't see uh oh i'm sorry no no, no. check yeah that could be an issue that would actually reverse the game uh never mind um, yeah, this is actually probably saving the game for you. You probably have to sack the knight back. Although, still a pass pawn, still some technique uh, needed in the defense. But, uh, yeah, Moshe finds a really nice detail. And if he found this, you know, when he played knight d7, that would be very impressive. Uh, which is that after rook b7, there's d3. And uh, everything is working out perfectly. After captures, d2. Check. Oh. If you go check, you're just one move too slow. Right here, queen, you'd like to give a check, but the queen obviously defends that. Your rook is just one square in the way. And uh, that, that's very nice calculation uh, by, by Moshe. Um, so after d2, you try rook c7. Um, yeah, I guess you can't take, right? Yeah, yeah can. so queen, you queens picks up the pawn and uh, okay queen versus rook you'd think it would be easy one would think but as as we've seen in this game uh you know you can never be too sure he takes the pawn now i don't want to undersell how difficult these types of uh end games can be to win as black a lot of times if you know if white is resilient they can set up some very you know tough fortresses to break you know Maybe put the rook on f4, or pawn on a4, h4, something like this, and it's just really difficult to break through. A lot of times here as black, you have to try to make uh, another weakness on the king's side to uh, open up the king and 
basically the farther the king and rook are, eventually you're able to use the threat of forking the king and rook uh, by some number of checks. But yeah, this is, I think, a tough endgame to win, and it's smart to play on as white. But uh, I, I have to ask, what was the time situation here? Um, I think here I had her at like three to four minutes, and I think he still had around like ten minutes. Okay, so that that is a big factor, I think, uh, if you're playing with the black pieces. Because as white, it's like every move you're stepping on landmines. You, you don't know, uh, you always have to calculate if there's some weird series of checks that you're going to drop the rook. But, uh, yeah, G5. Um, let's see. I feel like there's, I feel like G5 is not the move. Although maybe, maybe there's some logic to it. But somehow, somehow I, I want to go H5 and H4. But maybe, maybe it's sort of similar. Obviously, H5 here you can take. And, uh, ah, although... Yeah, maybe this, you'd have to evaluate if, that, if that's a fortress or not. But g5, okay, maybe, you know, maybe it's good. Maybe bringing the king up like this. Okay, a4, makes sense, check. And again, this rook is scaring me. I feel like the rook is, whenever the rook is undefended in these types of situations, I, I get worried. Um, for example, I guess here, right? But like, okay. Yeah, maybe you can do that. So maybe g6 makes a little bit more sense. Keeping a little bit more uh, flexibility. Right, king g7 first, and for example, check. This is not really, I guess, working as well anymore. Obviously, it's not working as well anymore. Right, there's no, no rook at 5 there. But, okay. Yeah, maybe g6 and h5 is the way to go. Maybe like this. Although h4, h5... Or maybe not even h5. Uh, okay, maybe, maybe we're getting too much into the weeds. But, uh, yeah, g5 is an interesting setup here. Check. Queen f3 looks really nice, and uh, this is the classic situation where it just becomes very difficult to defend everything. Uh, queen versus king like this. Uh, okay. F f6 I do not like. I'm going to go on the record and say it. Maybe, uh, well, I actually, I, I'm going to, I would, I would bet the computer doesn't like this either. This looks... Uh, very computer says, computer says nothing bad about this move. Really? Yeah. Okay, well, maybe uh, I'll side with uh, the human chess players on this one. Cut, you know, this this is not it. This is not it. Uh, now there are chances. Or, okay, you know, like there are tricks, as, we, as we're going to see in the game. Past pawn, there, there's issues with bringing this king anywhere, really. You put it in the corner, okay, you're not making any progress. If you start coming this way, well... There's going to be maybe some skewering along the back rank. I just really, really do not like the decision uh, to open up the seventh rank. I would like to see this first, then this. Check, maybe then you go f6, right? And then there's uh, not really any issues. Your king is up. You can march further uh, in a lot of cases. You can support h4, uh, h5, h4 like this. This looks like a much more harmonious way. Now, okay, to be fair, as black, you are up a queen. So maybe f6 uh, is still winning, but, you know, I've been complimenting Moshe's technique all, all, uh, all game. This one is, is not, I, you know, personally, maybe, maybe I'm being uh, too much of a stickler, but not a fan. Not a fan. King f8 and, uh-oh, endgame fans will, will know about the classic uh, skewering trick when the pawn reaches uh, the seventh rank. This... Is, is setting up for, for some bad uh, for some bad news for the for the black king. He's bringing the king, bringing the king, but okay, is that king gonna make it to b8? Let's see, a6. Okay, he's he's wandering, and uh, we're seeing the trick. We are seeing the trick. A7. You think that square's defended, but it's not. Check. Right. This is the problem, and because you played f6, well now. There, were, there was never any way to stop the rook from swinging all the way across. So this looks like a, a real issue. Check. King h2. Queen e2. And it looks like a fork. But d7, uh, a7 rather. And how are you stopping the pawn? I don't think anybody is. There's Actually, I don't think there's... Yeah, there's just no way to stop the pawn. Right? Even if you were to win this rook, 
still, check. And even worse, King E7, check. Right? So there's just not even a way you could set it up to, to save the game here. This is just an immediate draw. You know, this is, uh, yeah, nothing you could do. Yeah, repetition, check. Okay. And I guess here, what, you guys agreed on a draw? Um, I think we played it like a couple more checks. And then we just agreed. Yeah, check, check. And there's just nothing you could do, right? You go, obviously, this is defended. And, okay, let's say you try to get behind the pawn. This is, for the people at home, this is what we're talking about. Check. Takes and check. And, oh, oh wait. I'm sorry. You just go here first. There we go. Yeah, there we go. And this is always defended. And now you're going to go here. Okay. <laughs> I guess that's one way to mess it up. But yeah, if you try to, for example, win the rook, right? Oh, I, I win the rook? No. I make a queen, and I win yours. That is a big problem. But this is why this idea of bringing the king over when the rook is on h7 uh, is just simply failing. So really nice game, a lot of instructive points. And uh, okay, the people at home, I think, have a lot of information to try to place their rating uh, for our guest uh, Seth. Thank you for the game. Thank you for the analysis. And, and now, now it's uh, time for the second yeah. part of the show, which will give the players even more basis to put the rating on. So, Seth, send into the comments an invite for a five minute blitz game. All right. And let's see, first person to accept it gets to play a match against Seth. Oh. You pride yourself on thinking quickly, so let's see yeah. if you're able to do it. Let me know when you get it. Uh, and uh, so I don't know if you can share your screen too. No, I'll, I'll share a screen. I'll share a screen. Okay. Um, it says it's not allowing me to post this link. Why not? It says the comment has failed to post to International Chess Academy. I don't know. What's it saying? It says uh, this comment has failed to post to uh, International Chess Academy. Oh, why are you sending it to me? Just put in the. Put yeah, it I'm, in sending, the... I'm sending it in the comments. Like, not private chat, comments. Hmm. Why is it saying International Chess Academy? I have no idea. Hmm. I'll try to get a new link. Yeah, get a new link. And maybe try putting it in the private chat too, and then one of us can, uh, you know, move it over. Yeah, sure. All right, we got a link. I'm gonna put it in the comments. Good luck. Let's see who gets it. Joey Yang, Joey. I, 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 I see the. Uh, the the price is right technique there. You say seventeen eighty nine to get all the seventeen ninety eight. All right. Uh, the, yeah. Let's, let's get all the set. people who are staying over eighteen. Let me know when your game starts. I, I I see that. It's a smart technique. Let's see. Are you in a game yet? Not yet. So this is a chess.com link. The time control is, I believe, 3 0, right? Uh, I think it's 5 0. 5 0. I'm going to be honest, I actually just guessed. <laughs> but uh, 5 0 is a good one. Oh, yes, you're welcome, Joey. Still not in the game. All right. I'm going to give 20 more seconds. If not, then I will take this myself. Wow. I have to take it into his own hands. <laughs> and as, and as you guys know with how good I am at quick thinking with five, time five minutes, Three minutes and five minutes I feel like are a very different type of game. At least for me. I, I always get, uh, you know, hard palpitations right, no game yet? in three minutes. No game. What is the username? Maybe the link format is a weird way to do it. Maybe people can challenge you directly. Uh, I mean... You just, uh, you just joined the game. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so Alan takes it. Uh, people are saying they can't accept it. Um, so maybe for the next one. I don't know what's up with that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Italian to Aha! Classic. And this is supposed to be decent for, uh, for Black. Yeah. Actually, I think Black is already better. Okay, so... 
He knows the center fork trick. That's it. And that was quick, too. Not even a second thought. Alan, uh, maybe let's cut this music. Uh, it's getting a little bit repetitive. <laughs> oh, I forgot you don't have access. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to have you cut it, but I forgot I oh. gave it to Thomas. Yeah. Okay, I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, black here. This looks this looks pretty good. I'm also a big fan of black hair. Yeah. <laughs> too tired for this look. It's too Let's late see. in the day for me to do this. That's yeah. how I want to be nice. I, I was gonna uh, make fun of you for that, but it it is late. It is. Uh, I, I know you have a lot of work. Work. Hmm. Intra there's an intro okay it, interesting I thought you were gonna, gonna take with the the sea pawn that could have been very interesting to use the uh the sea pawn. I was gonna say I thought you were gonna take bishop with knight with bishop with bishop and then you oh, would, probably would have just played uh c3 then I just have to go back to uh b6 anyways how much time do I have only three minutes that's not good this is about uh, speed at this point. Both sides, you know, the double pawns are not the end of the world in a rook and game. Especially because the b6, uh, the b pawns are double. And maybe now your a3 move makes a little bit more sense. I think instead of a takes, c takes is very interesting. A lot of times that's not really good, but in blitz maybe it's, uh, you know, something to consider. Okay, G4, bold. Uh, okay, maybe maybe that's a good move. Maybe that's a good move. Uh, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> okay, I didn't want to say anything, but <laughs> that was the one square you couldn't go to. Well, I guess you, maybe E8 also, but... Okay, and just uh, for clarity, people at home, uh, it is Alan who just uh, hung a piece. Thank you, Luke. I appreciate it. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm just <laughs> for, for their estimations. Okay, wait. Oh, whoa, whoa. Okay, that is uh, that almost is a blunder, but not quite. There we go. Very nice. Yeah. If queen were to capture on d1, you throw in yeah, the, uh, check. Intermediate move, yeah. Yeah, that was a that was nice vision. And now I think it's just uh, yeah, this is uh, this is no good. Curious why nobody else could good. accept the invite. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> someone says, uh, "Goodness gracious!" That almost made me jump out of my seat. Same. That, uh, wow. Okay, queen f3 was leading to mate, but we'll, uh, you know, I, I appreciate a good endgame myself, so. Okay, whoa. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, my, oh God. my goodness. Oh, my. I played too quick there. Wow. Belly wow. goal! What a game. Belly goal! Uh, that's, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh my. Hmm. I'm writing that one down. <laughs> Belly goal! That's going, uh, yeah. Okay. This is why we play h6. Luft. You gotta make a flight square for the king. Don't get back rank made it. That's maybe yeah, not good. Way to get made it. All like right, that. Seth. Try again. Send a new link. All right, I'll, I'll try again. Oh, I think you have to. I think it says it. I think the reason why it didn't work, maybe you can only send it to friends. That might, yeah, that would make sense. Oh, maybe. All right, let's have you play a random person. Five minutes. Or actually, is invite link? Yeah. Is it only against friends? You think, Luke? Mm. Uh, yeah, that that would make sense. Mm. Um, 
Maybe just put your username in the chat and see if people can send you. Yeah, put your username. Up. Put your username in the chat and have someone yeah. challenge you. Yeah, that All works. Right. That's perfect. Or good, I guess if people want to put good their look. own use. Well, I, I said that before, but uh, yeah, people are also putting their own usernames in the chat. Uh, Seth, if you want to challenge them directly. All right, Seth's username is stringbean763. And as we can see, he's a pretty big Jets fan. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay. I'm in a game. I don't know which team can be more made fun of now. Your team or my team? Well, what fan are you? I'm a Chelsea fan. We just drew the 20th position team today. Okay, so this is like some weird, what, Joe Bava London? I missed the... No, it's a, it was a French. Ah, fr okay. That makes much more sense. Ah, that's why I don't recognize it. It was an exchange French. Okay, so he plays the exchange French. Hangs back rank me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I won't... You know, fair enough. Fair enough. We Sometimes, uh, sometimes you gotta follow up, uh, you know, back rank blunder with uh, with a draw. I, I respect that. Exchange French. Okay, and the player with the... Wait, what? Oh, this is a casual game. That's why I can't see their rating. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay. I like how Black was playing before, but I'm not a fan of uh, the knight on c6. I think instead of a6... I'd rather see a C6 with the knight on D7. Um, seems a lot more, you know, harmonious. But, you know, that knight can always reroute. Let's see, I think there's a nice reroute uh, in the air right now. Well, we're just in the future. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and somehow Black's Bishop is supposed to be the bad one, but it seems more much more active here. Um, I would be thinking about getting rid of that one. And same deal with uh, the Knight on C3. Somehow it seems uh, like it doesn't belong there. I think there's a nice reroute here for White, actually. Let's see. Oh, actually, maybe not. No, actually, I take that back. I was uh, talking about 91 to e3, but you give up the e4 square in a big way. So, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, someone says there's an outpost on c5. Kind of. Uh, but b6 is always a move there. Um, now, there would be a similar issue, like we were talking about before, where uh, if you play b6 too soon, the a6 pawn is hanging, but, yeah, uh, that, that's the issue in, the, in these structures. And yeah, after a4, all of a sudden this looks very, very difficult. a5, I like. Oh, and we're seeing that light squared bishop, not good, not great. Right, all pawns on light squares, uh, and that chain from b7 to d5 is really doing a good job blocking it out. Uh, yeah, I like how black is playing the last couple moves. Yeah, the bishop on e2 is really bad. Uh, I think there's only, I think you got to find a good move here as as white. Actually, I think, and I think there is a good one. Yes, knight h4. But still, still the, it's tricky because I think black has started an attack here. Let's see. Okay, I was thinking bishop g4 there. And with the knight recapturing on g4, there's uh, some attacking potential there. Now I, I think white is stabilized. This looks decent. Ninety four. Okay, but now wait. 
Wait, wait. What? Whoa, whoa. That, yeah, that's not gonna cut it. That move is uh, not gonna cut it, I don't think. Actually, maybe it will. Is this working tactically? Seth, check your time. Actually, it kind of is. It's it's like kind of working. Yeah. You, th this is uh, working by a hair. C3 <coughs> is rookie four. Okay. Yeah. That is, uh, that was kind of dodgy there for a second. Yeah. No takes. Okay. Oh, whoa. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Not again. Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Oh, my God. Not twice. All right. They say, well, they say late. Not my best day today. I agree. I think it's getting late for both of us. So what we're going to do, we are going to have you guys guess his rating. And the way I will do it, I'll put a Google form in the in the chat. In the chat, I'll put a Google form and I'll give you guys some time to guess his rating. Whoever gets closest to his actual USCF rating is going to win free entry to the Dr. Oslo Memorial ICA Championships. Our next tournament is going to be April 21st for that tournament. April 21st, Sunday. We of course have quads every Saturday before and after, but that tournament will be held April 21st. We got rid of the under 1400 section and we added two new sections, unrated all ages and under 600 K through eight to make it more inclusive for everyone and to make it so that the under 1400, the tiny section, they'll just play up in under 1600. So that's the, uh, it for a tournament. Our website's up here, icnj.net. Let's see what you guys come up with for the rating. Yeah, and entry to that tournament is, uh, that's, you know, that's a, that's a serious uh, sum, right? That's like, what, 25, 30 bucks or something like that? It's like, think oh. 35 early bird for yeah, like, that, 40 that's early no bird. No joke. So to the few viewers He's here. jump up 200 elo when he stops blundering back rank. <laughs> this is not my best time control. Same here, same here. That that's common. Yeah. yeah. But we at least you you know, when you're making the same mistake all the time, that's that can be a good sign. Right? You know that's what one thing you have to just push think the about. just push the H pawn and you're good. Yeah. Yeah. I remember right when we were talking about H four in your game, you're like, I would never think about that. Clearly. <laughs> So I'm going to start playing H3 on the first move in Blitz games now. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. Or maybe, uh, you know, Catalan, right, G3 type setups. You never blunder right. the back rank. That's why it's so solid. All right, so as people are filling out the forms, we are going to get into the interview, and we're going to finish with, we're going to finish with the results. So first off, we're not going to reveal your last name just yet, Seth because there's still time for people to look you up. But let me ask, what school do you go to? Uh, I go to Yeshiva at Frisch. Yeshiva at Frisch. And in the Frisch High School, you play like in a league format against other schools, right? Um, yeah. So how did your team do this season? Um, I forget like our, our final record. I think we just missed out on the playoffs. Hmm. Um, but I think overall we had a pretty good season. I think like yeah. almost our entire team was freshmen. So, hmm. and that's for you. That's for you. How long have you been playing? Um, so I used to play a bunch like when I was much younger. I can't remember why, but I stopped playing, and like a year and a half ago, I picked it back up and started taking it seriously. Yeah, that's good. And then this summer, you might join us working at the camp, right? Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, hope so. It's gonna be good to see you. Your first day teaching was today. Yeah. How do you like teaching and? What are your thoughts? Of, what are your thoughts on coaching overall? Coaching is a lot harder than it seems. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Because it's not just you passing on knowledge, but it has to be in a specific way that the students are able to absorb it. They have to be focused. Like everyone on the show has to be focused the whole time. So yeah, it's hard, that but it's like rewarding. A pointed yeah. remark. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? The the kid that I had today, he was he was like a really quick learner. So mm. it's kind of a blessing. Yeah. All right. So Seth, final question that I have for you. Do you remember your USCF rating? 
Um, I have let's a guess. You, let's see if you can guess your own rating. Should I say it? I think guess it your is. own rating. Let's see it. I think it's eleven sixty. It's eleven eighty. Eleven eighty. Eleven eighty. Very close in the chat. Wow. Yeah. Eleven eighty is your actual rating. Yeah. I mean, I it's don't play perfect. in that many tournaments. Yeah. But, hmm. but lots of people got close to it. There's two people that said 1008, one person that said 1238, one person said 1500. That's harder than mine. One person said 1369. But the winner with 1201 is uh -huh. Brian Andre. Wow. That's very good. That's so cool. congratulations. So yeah. congratulations to Brian for only being 21 points off. That is really, really close, especially considering that if you're gonna go based off your online rating, you would have been very wrong. <laughs> With your in-person rating, 1201 versus 1180, not that bad of a difference. So before we end, next week, it's going to be a big show. Seth is going to bring three of his friends from the Frisch High School, and they're going to take on ICA. I'm not sure if it's going to be ICA players or ICA coaches, but we'll be having a tournament. ICA versus Frisch, live, Sunday, 8 p.m., and you all will have a chance to win free entry by pretty much predicting who's going to win each match. So get excited for that. It's coming next Sunday, 8 p.m. See you all then.